Good morning and welcome. It is 10 o'clock. It is the 9th day of August 2021. I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming, news, weather, and sports. The OG GM with another OG GM adventure in news. It's Monday, so let's take a look at what's going on in the world of our amazing hobby. If anything has changed since Friday. And it doesn't look like much. Uh... So we have more updates from EN Publishing and all the projects they're working on, Zeitgeist, Judge Dredd, uh, and of course the 5E thing that they're doing. Um, we have uh, that uh, John Hodgkin has got a Kickstarter going on for the new edition of All State, uh, which is a dystopian cyberpunk type game. We have the announcement that the D&D Beyond canceled their art contest after the controversy and backlash over the terms of the entry. We also have another announcement from D&D Beyond that they will no longer be including the material from Unearthed Arcana as part of their site or app. This one is interesting. It may or may not mean anything at all. Uh, what they're saying is the amount of time, energy, money that it takes to put the playtest material from Unearthed Arcana up on D&D Beyond, which is playtest material and therefore not official canon D&D rules, is energy, time, and money they could use to keeping the site more up to date and putting more things into D&D Beyond that are rules and are, you know, official uh, now, D and D Beyond is usually about a month behind between product release and about the time it takes them to get something working on the site. So, if a product came out today, hardback, we would see usually it come up anywhere from a couple days to a month to catch up. Uh, part of this, I think, is to work to get the the transaction much quicker. Uh, case in point, we knew we now know that a lot of the stuff from uh, upcoming books, Strixhaven and the Pixie thing, were already set to be uploaded to D&D Beyond. The code was already in, and that was how people were able to hack into D&D Beyond and see the pictures and the announcements and the information before Wizards of the Coast actually announced it. So the stuff about Strixhaven was already loaded up to the D&D Beyond code. People hacked into the D&D Beyond found the code, printed it out, found out what it was so people knew ahead of time with Strix, about Strixhaven and then, of course, spoiled the release, therefore sort of disempowering whatever Wizards of the Coast had planned for when they were going to tell people that it was the next release because people already knew. Because uh, I guess we can't have new things. So I'm assuming part of this is to increase security as well so that this doesn't happen again, as well as just being more focused on official d d content as opposed to Unearthed Arcana stuff, which at the end of the day is unofficial, not canon to D&D rule sets. It's supposed to just stuff you'd be experimenting, playtesting, see what works, see what doesn't work, and you never know when or if the stuff on Earth Arcana is going to translate to an upcoming product. So, yeah, it kind of makes sense. It could mean something or it could not mean something, but at the end of the day, it's all about keeping D&D beyond up to date with whatever is actually out on the shelves as well as keeping their data safer. Moving on, congratulations to Avatar Legends, the role-playing game. It has broken all Kickstarter records for role-playing games, making up $3.2 million as of this printing, and it's probably gone up. Not bad for a company that... Uh, is making a game that uses Powered by the Apocalypse as opposed to D&D. Uh, this is probably the most money a Powered by the Apocalypse Kickstarter has ever made. Uh, yes, I know it's not the single largest Kickstarter ever. That was still the uh, Critical Role animated, but that's animated and it's a completely different category than this. This is a tabletop role-playing game that has made three point something million dollars. What that means it's catching up Critical Role and it's for Avatar. I mean, I didn't know there was going to be this big of an audience for an Avatar the Led role-playing game, but I guess people really love and miss that world and want to see it translated to an RPG world. I mean, the magic system is pretty cool and different, 
So will it keep going? Let's see. We have an announcement from Beatles and Grin that they are, uh, made a deal with Darrington Press to produce the deluxe editions of the Taldori campaign setting. Notice it's Beatles and Grimm and not Wizards of the Coast to, who are producing this. And notice it's Beatles and Grimm's and not Darrington Press that are producing this. They're producing it through D Beatles and Grimm, but it's still the Darrington Press uh, deluxe edition of the Taldori campaign, which we have found out is going to cost anywhere from 200 something to $350. Wow. Uh, High Moon Press. High Moon Press has announced that they are closing in effect of September 1st. All material produced by this company will be removed from sale. High Moon is long history going back to third edition, creating third body products for D and D's type stuff uh, and third edition OGL type stuff. They are also the creators of the Hard Boil series. Uh, so their stuff is having a sale on drive through So if you're a product of High Moon and want to grab it before he disappears, head on over to drive through Uh, the mystery of who purchased Fire Flying Buffalo Games has been answered. It is Webbed Sphere Incorporated. Webbed Sphere being a bit of an enigma as we don't have any pre public presence of them online. They are a holding company for other companies, including game retailers. If we have a new Humble Bumble, though it's not that new, uh, we have the Spazio Starfinder book bundle featuring 36, 36 digital rule books, source books, adventures, blotty, 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 for about $30. And that goes to benefit the comic book for kids charity. We also have the Pellegrine Press 13 Age bundle, uh, which gets you five digital products, including the kickstart rules for only a dollar. And this benefits the Oceana Protecting the World's Oceans charity. Uh, if you're wondering why the picture of the dro has been staring at you for the past seven minutes, that because it's at the end of the top of the end of the news, the whole dro orc racism, genetic genocide, dro equal black equal evil thing apparently is reemerged its ugly head and is. A topic again it had gone away for a while because common sense won out but once again now uh, apparently it has come back obviously following in the footsteps of R.A. Salvatore's announcement that he is completely rewriting the um, history uh, and uh, social concepts and everything about the Drow that he has ever created is to be more in tune with the current political environment because R.A. Salvatore claimed that he wasn't aware that the Dro were causing people harm or that somehow the Dro were being used as a racial stereotype for people of color. Now, mind you, in my entire life, since the Dro first became made available, I have never once met Anybody who made that uh, connection between Dro equals black equals evil equals black equals people of color equals evil. And I have played with people of color and never once, never once have I met anybody who made said, oh, well, Dro are a racist stereotype. Uh, and by playing a Dro, you're propagating racial stereotype and racial genocide. Same thing with orcs. But uh, and, and we know that was a thing last year, a very heated topic. And then it seems to have gone away. But now it's back because we can't have good things. So hopefully common sense will reign again and we will realize that no, they are a made up fantasy waste with absolutely no real world coalition. And that Dro and Orcs are not in any way, shape or form, nor have they ever been an attack on any species, race, color, religion, sexual orientation, height, weight, age, anything. They're fantasy races and do not have any effect on the real world whatsoever. But apparently it's a thing again. Till next time, I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming. If you appreciate this content, let me know. If you haven't subscribed, let, please subscribe. Help me hit 1,000 subs by the 50th anniversary of Dungeons & Dragons. I will talk to you later. Get off my land.